Pack with four touchdowns will not play tonight. So Mike Edwards, that's a plot wrinkle uh, that we, I don't think, anticipate. Uh, yeah, very much so. In, in fact, I'm a little bit speechless on the radio that he's been practicing that I know of for the last week or so. Uh, not sure what's happening there, but uh, he is one of those top receivers. Big hands, big jumps, 6'3", uh, and can really, can really be a part of that wide receiver deep crew there. So perhaps an opportunity for Cole Turner or perhaps Elijah Cooks, another one of the big receivers on the outside. I like to think that Mannix and Fossum are pretty much expected to go in the slot, the shorter guys, but Brendan O'Leary Orange, OJ as they call him, the a preeminent big returning receiver, of course, with Wyatt Demps matriculating. All right, the uh, two quartets of team captains meeting at the 50-yard line at Mackey Stadium, Chris Oldfield. The referee is Dwayne Johnson, and will go down to join Dwayne Johnson with the toss of the coin momentarily. Today's toss of the coin brought to you by Nissan, the Nissan Rogue, the best drive on game day. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Tails. What's your call? The call is next. It's Tails. Nevada, you want to toss? You want to defer? The Nevada's winning the toss. They chose to defer to the second half. Want the ball? Which way do you want to kick? Okay, turn your backs that way. Turn. All right, Nevada wins the toss. They defer well, the state, to the we'll second half. The All right. Toss of the coin analysis, Mike Edwards. They're 1-0. Well, it's, it's a coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the two groups of captains meeting at the 50-yard line, exchanging handshakes, and the pack will kick it away to the Portland State Vikings, and we'll see who the quarterback will be for the Vikings. Remember, they had two guys get a lot of action. Last year, Jelani Eason, sophomore out of Los Angeles, started last year in the opener at Brigham Young, ended up playing in six games. He won the starting job in fall camp a season ago, started the first three games, ended up starting five and appearing in six. But because the Vikings were O, and eventually 11, but 0-3 to start the year. They made a change of quarterback, and that was Davis Alexander, who played in five games a year ago, started three of them, and threw for over 300 yards in all three of his starts. So one of the great plot points of this one will come to the fore here in the first series, assuming the pack kick it away, which we cannot assume. Never can assume anything, but... We know a lot about quarterback controversy from last year. That's right. Fortunate enough, we do not have to do that again this year with Ty Ganji leading the realm at offense, leading the, leading the offensive realm. Nathaniel Hawthorne is deep to receive, and he's joined by Easton Trakel. Trakel has some experience as a kick returner a season ago. For Portland State, the Vikings in white jerseys, green pants, green numerals, White helmets trimmed in green. The pack resplendent in their home navy blue jerseys, white numerals and lettering, navy blue helmets, silver pants. The pack will kick left to right, Ramiz Ahmed. The senior from Bishop Gorman runs up with the right boot, drives it. End over end, the season is underway. Trakel watches it go over the back line. A touchback for Ramiz Ahmed. And first and 10 of the 25 for the Vikings to get this one started. And before we get too deep into this one, I wanted to touch on this in the Bud Light tailgate. We didn't have an opportunity to, but now on kickoffs, any fair catch inside the 25 is an automatic touchback. That is a new rule for 2018. Now we saw a, an old fashioned touchback there as Ahmed blew it out the end zone. So first and 10, and let's get you the Campani Auto Group starting lineup for the Wolfpack. Starting lineup brought to you by Campani Auto Group. On the defensive line, Corey Rush, Hasia Sakona, Caleb Meter. We'll set the rest of the defense in a moment. 
Back of the center, it's Davis Alexander alone in the backfield, right to left for the Vikings. First snap of the year, swinging out right side. It's going to be a double pass coming back to the quarterback, Alexander, near side. At the 25 to the 30, up the near sideline, 35-40, picking his way and out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So a gain of 17 yards on a pass to Danny Velasquez, the third-string quarterback, on a lateral who threw back to, to the, the original quarterback. quarterback. Like you said, or like we talked about the, the, the pregame show, they're going to pull out all the stops, whether it be on uh, special teams and obviously first play from scrimmage, uh, a double-double pass screen, I would call it. Pistol alignment. Carlos Martin is the running back behind Alexander. Three men to the right side. First and 10 of their own, 42 for Portland State. Hand off Martin, cut back, hit to the backfield, and then Weber rides him down after a gain of just one to the 43. In between the hashes, second down and nine to the 43 for Carlos Portland Martin State going right to left in towards the setting sun as they go from south Eight towards one, north and the sun down. setting behind the grandstand to the northwest more or less here at Mackey. Those angling broad brushes of daylight across midfield. Second and nine of the 43. Alexander with trips to the right and a slot to the left. Three-man front for the pack. Alexander turns, throws, swing pass, right side, Trakel, 45-50. Spun around, pulled down, then squirms forward to the 49-yard line. He's a yard, maybe a yard and a half short of the first down. Tackle made by Weber once again. Weber got help that time. Portland State seems to be wanting to get the... Uh, Wolf pack laterally, side to side. So a lot of sideline side to sideline passes uh, to make those guys go laterally. Got help from Look Nef for a longer pass this time. Weber and Nephi Sewell converging on that hit. So it's third and one of the 49 of the pack, 48 the line to gain. Pistol alignment, and it's a handoff to a new tailback who squirms up the hash mark and has a first down, but barely. And that is Sergio Hoffman, the junior from Greshman, Oregon, and a transfer from Pima. Community College, he takes the handoff, rumbles up the right hash to the 48 of the pack, and it's good for a first down for Portland State. Turning clock, 13.09, first half. First quarter, no score. It remains Hoffman in pistol alignment behind Alexander, the quarterback for Portland State. Slot left, one man, that's Dagby, alone to the right side. Pack show blitz here on first and 10. Delay handoff. Squirming out of a tackle, then spinning and mashed down by Sewell is Hoffman. He spun around and got about maybe back to the line of scrimmage, second and 10 at the Nevada 48 for the Vikings. With some of these uh, run uh, pass options uh, Portland's running with, uh, you've got to be able to hold your own on defense, and uh, Sewell did a great job of filling from the backfield and uh, making a, a, a zero gain. Second and 10 of the 48 of Nevada for Portland State. No score first quarter. It is Martin behind Alexander. Pistol alignment. Trips to the field side. The wide side on the left. Alexander fakes. Hit. Rolling right. In trouble. Racing to the sideline. Throws it away. Hammond and Reed along with Adam Lopez were about to eat him for an early dinner. And he high-stepped it out of there just in time because those guys were coming. Squeezing that pocket. Um, force him outside. Make sure he... He gets outside for his uh, force guys. Third down and 10. Nevada last year allowed better than 44% conversions against on third down defensively. That's a number that will have to improve if they are to bump up the win total. Alexander pistol alignment. Behind him, Martin. Third and 10 of the 48 of the pack for Portland State. Alexander in the pocket, rushed, throws up field, caught at the 30-yard line. This is Tomo Pea in open field at the 10 to the 5, and he's in. Touchdown, Portland State. 48-yard strike on third and 10. Alexander to Tomo Pea. And it is the Vikings on the board, 6-0 at 12.07. Well, you have to hand it to Alexander. He got some pressure up on his right-hand side, and he took one, two steps up. Found the open receiver, which is his favorite receiver, the tight end number 89. And that, that's a big boy running through there. And shed two blocks to get a, get a touchdown for Portland State. Now for the point after, it's true freshman Cody Williams out of Marietta in Southern California. Hold from Neiser. Good snap, spotted and kicked. It is up, and Williams is true with his first PAT attempt and conversion of his collegiate career. So 12.07 to go, first quarter. Portland State strikes first. It is 7-0 Vikings. 
48 yard touchdown pass from Alexander to Charlie Tamopea, the number one target in the offense. He's a preseason all big sky selection. Had a breakout season last year, starting nine games with 45 receptions and three touchdowns. So seven nothing Portland State. Our Drive summaries today brought to you by Dolan Lexus. They invite you to test drive a Lexus today. Seven plays, 75 yards, two minutes and 53 seconds. And the Nevada offense will work with a deficit now as the pack set up to return this one in front of the northern end zone. Definitely a little smack in the face of the Wolf Pack right now. They, all they can do is answer. And uh, they got to turn the page, move on to the offensive side. Defense got to regroup and iron out some of those first first uh, play scrimmage uh, wrinkles and figure it out from there. Williams set to kick it away, going right to left for the pack. Looks like Kelton Moore is deep to receive, which is something we've not seen. He's standing at the two-yard line. And a penalty marker is down as Williams approaches the ball. Kelton Moore is deep to receive at the two-yard line. Toa Tawa is back there as well, closer Ooh. to the nine-yard line. That is a beefy set of returners. Delay of game on the kickoff. Yeah, they only get, once uh, that PAT goes, they only get 40 seconds, just like a play. That's another new rule, Another too. new rule, and they got to line it up and kick it before you could probably talk to your kickoff, uh, kickoff team for a minute or so before they get out lined up. Not anymore. So five-yard penalty. Williams will boom this away right to left from the 30-yard line. He runs up, drives it with the right boot. That's a low side-winding kick that bounces at the five and goes right near the pylon. It is a touchback. Kelton Moore lets it go. First and 10 for the pack at their own 25-yard line. 12.07, first quarter. Portland State strikes first, leading 7-0. And now the greatly heralded Nevada offense for the first time. Hey, Reno Caniacs feed your game face at our new location across the street at North Virginia and McCarran. The chicken is kicking, the sauce is boss. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, official chicken fingers of the Wolf Pack. The sauce is boss, oh, I like that. Chicken is kicking, Mike. I'm Ty a sauce Ga man. There's Ty Ganji. <laughs> Kelton Moore on his right hip. Ganji the senior out of Southern California. Five yards back, slot right and left. He has a snap. He's back with time. Loft and right side. Mannix at the 45. The pass too long incomplete. Mannix was looking for a call, but good stride for stride. Hip pocket coverage from Montre Brown, if I may borrow Ooh, your there phrase, you go. Mike Evans. Second and ten on the incomplete. Historian buff from last year, huh? Hip yeah. pocket coverage. Hip pocket. I was, what, you didn't think I was paying attention? Yeah, it was awesome. Second and ten of the 25. Slot left and right for the pack. Pistol alignment. Back behind Ganji, one back, and it is a fake. Ganji keeps around left side, cuts inside of the tackle, falls forward to the 27-yard line, two-yard gain, and it'll be third down and eight. Ganji on the quarterback, Eber. Sam Enos moving up from safety to make that hit for Portland State. Interesting, with Portland State, they have that flex defense. They have a three-man front, and then they have a rush position. And they also have a cornerback, a safety, a cornerback, and then a Sam and a Rover. Trips to the right side, third and eight. Line to gain the 35 for Nevada. Trailing 7-0, left to right in blue here in the first quarter. Motion on the line, Ganji is back, flags down. He lofts it left side short, throws for Henley, incomplete the 45. And let's see about the flag. It appeared the near side end for Portland State was in the neutral zone. So flag at 11.20 here in the first quarter. It's 7-0 Vikings. With that third and long. That third and long, they put a little four, four guys in the coverage and then brought a linebacker up. Uh, the other linebacker was nine yards deep. So it's a lot of space in between there. Larry Ross offside for the Vikings. That brings up a manageable third down and a short three. In between the 32 and the 33-yard line, lined again the 35 for the pack. Trips to the near side. Pack might go for it here. Back to pass. Ganji zings it out near side, complete. Fossum on an out pattern, right side line 50, pushed out of bounds around the 40-yard line of Portland State. He was shoved out of bounds by Artuz Manning. And is Caleb Fossum fired up or what? He hasn't had a ball in his hands in the game for a long, long time, like 366 days to be exact. 
28 yard gain, not mark it back to the 44 yard line, so a 24 yard gain. First and 10 in Portland State Territory as Fossum, who was hurt after a really good start at Northwestern last year in the opener, had four catches, 36 yards, and suffered a knee injury. He has a big gainer there. First and 10, the Vikings 44, Ganji is back, quick throw over the middle, and it hits Fossum in the helmet and falls to the turf at the 30-yard line. That's got to deal with the sun right there with your long shadows coming across the, uh, the field right into the sun, hit him right in the helmet. So second down and 10 to the 44 of Portland State for the pack. Incompletion stops the clock at 10.47. Nevada goes without a huddle. Moore, the running back on the right hip of Ganji. Slot left and right. Four-man front for the Vikings. Back is Ganji, pumps, steps up, looks to run, darts left, darts right, and falls across the 40 to the 39. He's pulled to the earth by Kaysen Jaquette, the leading tackler from a season ago for Portland State. Ganji moves it to the 39-yard line, bringing up a third down and five for Nevada. He had a little pressure on his right-hand side, had to force him off to the left. Uh, got a good little gain, though, five yards. Third and five of the 39, line to gain the Portland State 34. Pack trailing 7-0 first quarter. Ganji pistol alignment, more behind him. Snap and a whistle, and the play is blown dead. So we anticipate a procedure call here. Yeah, it's on Palomares. He's a little, a little, a little hesitated that he came out of his stance. False start. Offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty, still third down. You hear Dwayne Johnson's microphone and the wind coming across it. At kickoff, that wind at 13 miles an hour, but gusting to stronger, higher velocities. It's third down and 10. Line to gain the 34, line of scrimmage the 44. Pack just across midfield on the Portland State side. Slot left, one man to the right, tight end to the right side. Handoff, Moore, 45, plunges to the 40, backs his way to the 39. He's got a gain of five, but they needed 10. This is four down territory though for the pack. Tackle made by Larry Ross of Portland State. It's fourth and five, and the offense stays on the field. They, they actually, I think they ran that play to get a four or five yards because this is her, their realm. They, they want to go on their side of the field, 40 and in, fourth down and five. That's their thing. Pack converted better than 39% on fourth down last year, and they're not afraid to go for it. Jay Norvell always in favor of it when it works. Ganji lofts it left side. Mannix, he lost it in the sun on the far sideline of the 18-yard line. Mannix had single coverage, and it looked like he was looking back into the sun on that lofted ball. Yeah, this time of year, that sun sets in the, in the northwest uh, corner, so it's a little bit of long Media shadows. So the pack run out of downs at the 39-yard line of Portland State. Timeout on the field, 9-14, first quarter. Vikings 7, Nevada nothing. This is Wolfpack football from Learfield. just a game. It's family. It's love. It's a way of life. It's when generations come together and celebrate as one. It's the moments you talk about, the stories you tell your kids and their kids. It's more than just a game. It's you. It's us. It's Nevada Wolfpack football. Tickets are on sale now. Visit NevadaWolfpack.com. Seven nothing Portland State, 9-14, first quarter. Fans from mini excavators to earth moving dozers, Cone Equipment is the place to rent heavy construction equipment. Growing with and supporting our community since 1988, Cone Equipment has it all. Visit ConeRents.com today for more information. Today's broadcast brought to you by Renown and Hometown Health. It's another home game in Reno, and our community comes together to back the pack. Thank you, Nevada Wolfpack. You make our hometown Renown. 
And today's broadcast brought to you by Bud Light, official sponsor of Nevada Athletics, reminding you to enjoy responsibly. 7-0, Portland State, 48-yard touchdown strike from quarterback Davis Alexander to tight end Charlie Tamopea on the opening series of the season. Then the pack run out of downs in their first offensive series at the 39 of the Vikings. So the Vikings have it first and 10 of their own 39 with a lead, the 9-14 mark. Alexander in the pistol alignment. Darian Green, the senior from Lafayette, Indiana, and the transfer from Ball State now sets up as the lone running back. Three-man front for the pack defense. Slot left and right for the Vikings. Alexander hands off to Green, sweeping the right side at the 40, picking his way and falling forward to the 41-yard line. Gabriel Sewell leading the charge there for the pack defense. Gain of two, second and eight of the 41 for Portland State. Lucas Weber did a great job of hitting that A-gap, the play side A-gap, and going flat down line of scrimmage to come and tackle him from behind, as well as Gabriel Sewell. Uh, the linebackers have a lot more time this year to read because you got a lot bigger guys up front holding those offensive linemen up. Green checks out in the backfield. Hoffman back in there. He's on the right hip now of Alexander. There's some confusion to the near side of the offense and now Emmanuel Dagby sets up breaking a trips on the near side going to slot on the far side and Portland State takes a timeout. Well, we've seen a couple penalties. We see a timeout now as the receivers weren't quite in the right alignment and there's no preseason in college football, right? You're going to iron out some wrinkles here in the first quarter. And hopefully sooner than later. I mean, it's usually a typical game where we have a few of a uh, little misalignments, uh, guys not coming out on kickoff, so on and so forth. We haven't had that yet, but uh, those are the wrinkles you try to work on as much as possible during uh, spring ball and, and fall camp. But it's it's game time. You got, I wouldn't say jitters, but you, you know, things are moving a little bit at a different pace. And, and so you're going to have those things. The quicker you get those done and ironed out, the better off you're going to be. Second down and eight out of the timeout for Portland State at their own 41-yard line. Line to gain is their own 49. The Vikings lead at 7-0. 8.30 first quarter here at Mackey Stadium. Pack show a blitz with five on the front. Hand off Alexander. It's a reverse coming around to the right side. This is Kelly. Kelly, right sideline, 45. Cuts back into the 46. Flag comes in late. Kelly went up the sideline, then turned directly laterally. He was finally brought down by Hausia Sakona, and a late flag comes okay, in. And I'm curious because the timing of that flag was not standard. Well, the rest might have some wrinkles, too, trying to get those flags out in time. Illegal block in the back. Offense. Number 77. Five yard or 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. That's Corbin Sorensen, the guilty party out of Kennewick, Washington. 6'6", 305 pound sophomore. He's the guard on the right side. And that's a bad penalty. That was a decent gain. Instead, it's back to the 31 yard line. Second and 18 for Portland State. Trips to the near side, that's the wide side. Slot to the boundary side, the far side. Alexander alone in the backfield. Three-man front for the pack. Alexander has the snap, pumps, pressured. Trying to get away, pulled down by Rush. Just across the line of scrimmage, it will not be a sack. Gain of a fraction of a yard, but oh. Rush just bull rushed right Alexander up the middle and blew up that play. It was awesome. Corey Rush is a... I really like him. He's a cool, calm, and collective guy off the field. Nice to talk to. Very intelligent. Uh, but when he gets on the field, he, he gets a little he gets a little naughty to him. Looking forward to the season with him. Third and 18. Line to gain is the 49. Line of scrimmage is the 31. Portland State in their own end, right to left, leading 7-0. Seven and a half minutes to go, quarter one. Alexander has a snap. Back he comes, pressured by Reed. Cuts back. Reed's after him. He's racing to the near side laterally. Turns and throws a field, and it's caught at the 49. Shoved back, though, to the 48-yard line. Rufus was there. Rufus, along with E.J. Muhammad, it's a gain of 17. They needed 18. They got it to the 48. It's fourth. And one. Davis Alexander, the quarterback from Portland uh, State, he actually, he was getting squeezed, got caught a couple times. D. Lyman, I don't know who it was, grabbed his arm. Okay, and he kept on rolling, rolling. Crossed his body, nice throw. Allowed the uh, receiver to go up and get it. Dagby with a good catch in traffic there. Fourth and one. And Portland State will go for it. Fourth and one at the 48. 
Motion behind Alexander, handoff straight ahead with the first down. It is Sergio Hoffman to the 50 yard line. And first and 10 for Portland State running between the tackles, running with physical authority against the Nevada defensive front. First and 10 in midfield. Yeah, for sure. They went right off uh, center's bottom right there uh, in the A gap and just dove for a first down. They only had to get a half a yard, so. First and 10 of the 50 for the Vikings. They're just on their side of the 50. Hoffman behind Alexander, pistol alignment. Dagby, wide side of the slot. Talali Motu inside that slot. Handoff going up the middle to the 47 of Nevada. That is Hoffman once again. Ridden down after about a two yard carry. Second down and eight of the 48 of the pack. Malik Brody there, one of the conversions from offense to defense and on the play defensively, second and eight. Yeah, Malik had, Brody had a guy on top of him and he tackled uh, the running back for one arm. Alexander, delay handoff to Martin, hit in the backfield, drop for a loss at the 49. That was Adams. Adams tied up Martin around the ankles in the backfield and Martin could fall forward only to the Portland State 49. Lost back to the 49. It's third down and 11. The line to gain is the 40 of the Wolfpack. We're starting to see a little change up in the looks of the defensive linemen uh, shifting from straight up alignment inside or outside or right or left, depending on the play call. And uh, getting a little rush to the outside by Adams. That was nice down the line. Ruffin and Trakel slotted near side. Trips to the far side for Portland State, third and 11 of their own 49. Alexander is back. Big rush from Hammond. He's long to his right side. Gabriel Sewell after him. He races around right end, picks up a couple of yards. He's out of bounds around the corner at the 46 of the pack on the fourth sideline. It'll be fourth down and six. A nice little inside move to put the right tackle on his heels a little bit, push the, push the quarterback out. Uh, still gained a few yards, though. So. Fourth down. Punt unit is on. This is Ben Neisner, sophomore from Kent, Washington. Deep to receive, McLean Mannix at the 10-yard line for Nevada. That was actually two local boys hang, uh, going at it. That was uh, Hammond and uh, Carlos Barraza from Reno High School. He's a Husky. Good snap to Neisner, drives it away, right side, knuckling kick. Mannix won't touch it. It takes a great pitching wedge stop, bouncing inside the 10 and rolling dead at the one-yard line. A brilliant punt for Portland State. About a 46-yard punt from Neisner. Timeout on the field. Pack have it back at their own one-yard line. 4.16 to go first quarter. 7-0 Vikings. It's Nevada football from Learfield. It's more than just a game. It's family. It's love. It's a way of life. It's when generations come together and celebrate as one. It's the moments you talk about, the stories you tell your kids and their kids. It's more than just a game. It's you. It's us. It's Nevada Wolfpack football. Tickets are on sale now. Visit NevadaWolfpack.com. Nissan knows game day is all about the game-winning drive. The Rogue has available technologies that'll help make the day's best drive getting to the stadium. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Alex Margulies down on the Nevada sideline. What's going on with Brendan O'Leary Orange not playing? Hey, good, uh, good to be on the broadcast here tonight. You know, you were talking earlier about Brendan O'Leary Orange being out for the game. I don't have any other details on why he is out, but I have heard 
from around the sideline that he is expected back next week. Now, for Nevada, of course, losing a wide receiver and losing a Leary Orange is big, but this is a team that is extremely deep at wide receiver. We've already seen the depth come into play. Guys like Caleb Ball, great to see him back onto the field. Fossum, of course, going down with the three at the beginning part of last season. But a lot of young talent as well that Jay Norvell said he is not afraid to play. We could see the debut of Romeo Dubs. He's a Southern California native from L.A. Coach Norvell felt like when they got Dubs that he was one of the best wide receivers in the country, period. And they felt very fortunate to grab him. We'll see if he makes his debut tonight. First and ten of their own one-yard line. In his end zone, play action fake from Ganji. Rolls right, flips it out. Intended for Cooks incomplete. Cooks making a dive out pattern at the ten-yard line. It'll be second and 10 from the one yard line. Incompletion stops the clock at 4-11. First quarter, seven nothing Vikings. That's Elijah Cooks, one of many big receivers back for another year in the program. Elijah played basketball as well, was on the pack team that made the run to the Sweet 16 in the springtime. Slot right, one man to the left, snap to Ganji, a good one, handoff, hit in the end zone, trouble, and it's a safety. That handoff to Kelton Moore was blown up, and Samis Kofe, the sophomore from Portland, tackles Moore for a safety. 9-0 Vikings. Yeah, that flex, uh, that flex uh, linebacker, if you will, at two yards was bouncing around, kind of hard to follow as an offensive line trying to put tabs on him. It really messed up the, the counting of the, the blocking scheme. So Kofe, along with Larry Ross, who's in that flex rush position, just blowing up the middle of the line. And right now, Mike Edwards, it's Portland State's controlling the line of scrimmage, offensively and defensively. For sure, they, they're coming with a handful of looks. Uh, I think on film, the flex was a little bit further out, maybe two or th two, maybe three yards, but that flex is bouncing around. Can really screw up an offensive lineman's uh, communication uh, as well as well as blocking scheme. So they're really using that to their advantage. Portland State is, um, as well as uh, on the other side, giving um, Nevada's defense a little troubles and, and blocking pretty well. So Nevada's defense did not record a safety last year, nor did their offense suffer one. Meanwhile, Portland State had one safety a year ago defensively. They pick up one here in the opener. An ominous, quiet buzz at Mackey Stadium right now as the pack kickoff following the safety from the 20-yard line. Ramiz Ahmed drives up with a right boot. Trakel with a catch at the 11-yard line. Up the right hash, cuts into the 30, and is mashed down right at the 30 as multiple blue shirts. Trey Carter-Wells leading the charge, pull him down. 31-yard line, 20-yard return on the kickoff following the safety. First and 10 for the Vikings at their own 31-yard line. They lead at 9-0, four minutes precisely to go in the first quarter. Back after this, it's Wolfpack football from Learfield. You are clear, this is break number three. The Silver State Series presented by IBEW, Local 401, Nevada Donor Network, and National Electrical Contractors Association. It's a structured rivalry series that matches the PAC and UNLV in sports and academics. You can follow points and standings throughout the year online, nevadawolfpack.com slash silverstateseries. 
Time to crunch the numbers. Brought to you by Ide Bailey, proud supporter of Pack Football and a top 25 accounting firm to deliver the solutions you need when you need them. Contact Ide Bailey and Reno Elko Fallon or Las Vegas to learn more. Nevada's offense right now, zero first downs, zero rushing yards, zero passing yards. 9-0 Portland State. They have the ball back following a safety. As Ross and Kofi tackled Kelton Moore in the end zone. So the Vikings at their own 31, right to left, south to north. Martin, the running back on the left hip. Uh, Davis Alexander, sophomore from Gig Harbor. He started three games last year and threw for over 300 yards in all three starts. He's got the offense again. Back to pass on first down, lofts the left sideline, leaping one-handed effort, incomplete. E.J. Muhammad came down to lower the boom on A.J. Ruffin, who was trying to corral that with his right paw up the near sideline. Instead, it's incomplete. Second down and 10 at the 31-yard line for Portland State. Yeah, the Wolfpack defense need to come away with a, a stop right here to give the offense a chance or a big play right here by the defense and they kick a little fire into the Wolfpack. 3.55, clock stopped after the incompletion. Martin behind Alexander, pistol alignment, second and 10 of the 31. Trips to the right side. Three-man front for the pack. Here comes a blitz from Reed. Alexander throws over the middle. Dagby drops it on a crossing route of the 31. Incompletion means it's third and 10. Delayed blitz from Malik Reed there. Remember, he's a linebacker now, which means he still gets to rush the pass. Yes, and he loves to do that. He is quick, agile, athletic. Uh, a little delay. The running back came up and gave him a little cut, but he still was able to put a lot of pressure onto the quarterback. Third and 10. Line to gain the 41 line of scrimmage of 31. Portland State in their own end, looking at a big pack blitz. Six man front. 9-0 Vikings, late first quarter. Alexander is back. Here's the rush. He rolls right. Rufus is on him. Hammond's on him. Throws across the oh. body. Intercepted. Coming the other way. It's Brown. Brown to the 20. To the 10. Touchdown, Nevada. Pick six, Daniel Brown. I'm so sorry for yelling on the mic, but that was awesome. That was awesome rush. Uh, the quarterback kind of got on the outside. Uh, a little on his heels, trying to throw, throw cross body. Daniel Brown came in, swooped it up, in for six. We told you he needed a big play. So Brown with the interception, and he takes it all the way to get Nevada on the scoreboard at 338 in the first quarter. It's Portland State 9 and Nevada 6. And now Ramiz Ahmed, who has supplanted Spencer Pettit as the place kicker, will attempt his first PAT in his collegiate career. Ahmed and Pettit both very accurate in camp. Coach Norvell said Ahmed just has a little more leg. Hold from Conaway, the punter, a low snap. It is up and it is no good. That was a bad snap. And I don't know if there was a block. We'll check the replay. Yep, somebody for the Vikings got a piece of it as well. So a low snap and a block on the PAT. And Portland State retains a three-point lead after the defensive touchdown for Nevada. It's 9-6, 3.38 to go first quarter. Mike, we have a real opening week affair now. We've got a safety, a missed PAT, a defensive touchdown, a couple of penalties. Might as well get all over in the first round, right? <laughs> really something in this first quarter. Well, for Brown, junior out of Carson, California, and Los Angeles County, Narbonne High School. He had a career-high six tackles against UNLV in the last game last year. He played in 10 games a season ago, and for the junior, he takes it to the house. What a big moment for Brown. That's his first career interception with the pack. That's got to be pretty exciting. Your first career interception, take it all the way back for six points to give a little boost to, the Wolf, to his own team, Wolfpack. So Ahmed will kick it away from the 35, left to right. Deep to receive, Trakel along with Hawthorne for Portland State. Run up in the kick, high end of her end effort. Trakel in the end zone five yards deep, takes a knee in the F in Wolf. 
It will be first and 10 at the 25 yard line for Portland State. So a lot of wrinkles in this first quarter. McKimmy Electrical Services is a start to finish electrical resource for your home or business and a proud sponsor of Wolfpack football. For all your electrical needs, visit McKimmyServices.com. McKimmy Electrical Services, providing an unmatched level of customer service. Here comes the Portland State offense. Alexander with the interception. Last year, five touchdown passes, three interceptions. In this game, he has one touchdown, 48 yards to Charlie Talmopea on the opening drive of the season. And now he has one interception as Daniel Brown returns it for a touchdown for Nevada. Look for a little bit more uh, blitzing going on here to get the Portland State guys on their toes. Hand off and hit immediately in the backfield is Hoffman, and he's run back by the scrum all the way back to the 13-yard line, but no gain on the play. Forward progress has him to the 25. Five blue shirts throwing him back. Well, that's what I meant by swarming on defense is getting those guys together and make sure all, as many hats in the ball as possible. Second down and 10 at the 25-yard line for Portland State. Trips to the near side. That's the wide side. Now Alexander sends a man in motion on the far side. Quarterback draw. Alexander starts up the middle, darts to the right side, gets back to the line, and that's it. Mush down as he tries to go around right end. That was... Malik Reed making the tackle at the 31-yard line. It's third down and nine, gain of one on the play. Line to gain is the 35-yard line. I said the 31, I meant the 26. It's third and nine from the 26 for Portland State. Running back is Martin. Dagby alone to the right side. And on the near side wide, it's Talamotu. Along with Trakel and Kelly in that trip's alignment. Three-man front for the pack. Martin behind Alexander in the pistol alignment. Alexander stands at the 21, has a snap, back to pass. Here's another blitz, throws right side of the flat. Martin's got it at the 22-yard line and mushed down. Loss of three on the play. And there was Reed and Rush <laughs> and Lopez, and they come racing off the field to the near sideline. Tackle for a loss means fourth and 12. At the 24, maybe the 23-yard line might be fourth and a long 12 here, so a punting situation for Portland State. And like I said, that was the third third play in a row. There were the whole entire Wolfpack, at least five of them right there getting off the pile. That's the attitude and demeanor that you want on defense. Mannix waiting at his own 46-yard line. Neisner will receive this snap around his nine-yard line. For Portland State, a good snap. He rolls to his right. He drives it away. That punt was partially blocked, and it's corkscrewing at the 37-yard line down to the 32. Well, it looked like a piece of the punt was snared on the right hand of Marquette Jackson on that punt cut. So a partially blocked punt and the pack in business at the 32 of Portland State. You see a replay, it was not the initial player 14. Jackson, I thought, who got it, but whatever the cause, that punt dreadfully short for Portland State. And first and 10 pack at the 32 going left to right, trailing nine to six. 120 to go, first quarter, Ganji and the pistol. Ganji with one man behind him. And it's a handoff. This is Kincaid at the 35, slides to the 32, pulled down by two defenders there. Kane, very minimal on the play. House making the tackle along with Houston Barnes for Portland State. Minimal gain on the play, second and 10 to the 32. Kanji has Kincaid on his right hip, slot to the left side. One man to the right, that's Cooks. Three-man front for Portland State. Now here comes a blitz on the outside left. Now a five-man front. Ganji is back, throws left side, complete underneath at the 30, and lunging is Armstrong across to the 29-yard line. Armstrong in the grasp of a couple of defenders. Arturs Manning made the tackle. It's third down and seven for Nevada. They're at the 29 of Portland State, and they need the 22. A little read route. 
um, to, to figure out where the defensive backs are going. He was either going to go 10 yards or five yards. He decided the five yard one reached out for another, another two. 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. Third and seven at the 29. Ganji lofts it right side. He's going for Cooks who drops it at the six. That brings up fourth down with six seconds to go here in the first quarter. Well, Cooks had his, he was looking over his inside shoulder at first and then whipped around to get, uh, while the ball was in the air. And as it was falling, he, he lost track of it for just one split, one split second. Cooks was behind single coverage and just couldn't hold it. So now a field goal attempt. Conaway will hold for Ramiz Ahmed. This will be officially 46 yards. Ahmed, first collegiate field goal attempt. 46 yards, far hash. Low snap again. The kick is up. It is plenty long, and it is good. Ramiz Ahmed from 46 yards ties the game at nine as time expires in the first quarter. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Coach Perry, the special teams coordinator, from the punt block was absolutely going, he was going nuts. Crazy, awesome, enthusiastic, and then same attitude towards his kicker for his, one of his, well, his longest field goal, um, obviously of the season, but very excited for him to get these guys pumped up. People don't realize that the special teams, a lot, a lot of it has to do with change of possession and enthusiasm, changing that game. So they sure did it that time. End of the first quarter, Portland State and Nevada are tied at nine. Back with the second quarter here at Mackey Stadium in a moment. This is Wolfpack football from Learfield. It's more than just a game. It's family. It's love. It's a way of life. It's when generations come together and celebrate as one. It's the moments you talk about, the stories you tell your kids and their kids. It's more than just a game. It's you. It's us. It's Nevada Wolfpack football. Tickets are on sale now. Visit NevadaWolfpack.com. Second quarter at Mackey Stadium. John Ramey, Martin Stabbard, Mike Edwards, Alex Margulies with you. 9 9 tie. Portland State and the pack. Bill and Lex's drive summary for Nevada. Four plays, three yards, a minute 17 off the clock. Ramiz Ahmed, officially from 46 yards, ties the game with a field goal at nine. Del Taco, proud to back the pack. Download the Dell app and register to get a free Del Beef burrito when the pack scored 21 points at home or away. Del Taco, it's fresh as Dell. All right, Mike Edwards. It was 9-0 Portland State, and it was a queasy feeling in the yard, but I think nine unanswered for the pack, and the faithful might be a little less, uh, well, they might be gripping a little less hard, right? Yes, for sure. Uh, we don't want remnants of, uh, of last year, and, and you never want to have give people faith about Traigle. being able to beat you. Traigle takes it out of the end zone up to the 10-yard line, bounces outside, running laterally 15, pushed out of bounds. Traigle was two or three yards deep in the end zone and brought it out of that northern end. And it cost Portland State because if he takes an either at the 25, but instead they'll start first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. Just underway, second quarter. Portland State went up 7-0 on the first drive of the game. It was Alexander connecting with Tamopea for 48 yards to make it 7-0. Then there was a safety. Kelton Moore was tackled in the end zone. And so it was 9-0 Portland State, but the pack, thanks to an interception return for a touchdown by Daniel Brown and a 46-yard field goal from Ramiz Ahmed, have scored nine unanswered, 
And we're level at nine as we start quarter number two. It's the season opener. First down handoff, try on the right side. Martin hit from behind across the 15 up to the 17 yard line. Coming out of there is Lopez making the tackle. Second down and eight to go. So it seems that the pack have started to put a priority on pressuring the passing game for Portland State. And it's, I don't know if it's what the game plan was, but it's the adjustment that's worked. Here comes a blitz from Reed on second and eight, back to pass quickly. Knocked down to the line of scrimmage. That was knocked down by Dom Peterson as Alexander wanted to throw a quick out to the near side to Martin. Yeah, I, I like what Coach Confuci has done with the D line. They have they have changed every three or four plays, getting fresh legs, getting that pass rush, uh, occupying the offensive linemen, putting them back on their heels, and that's and that's what Confuci is doing right now. And that's that little wrinkle he's ironed out, and it looks to be uh, pretty good for the Wolfpack. Line to gain is the 25. Line of scrimmage is 17. Third and eight for Portland State. Three-man front for the pack. Here comes Nephi Sewell creeping up. So is Rufus on a blitz. Alexander is back. Here they come. Alexander in trouble. Darts to his left. Now comes upfield. Leaps over a man, but he's tripped and falls forward to the 19. That was Lopez again. Not a sack, but pressure. Two-yard gain on the play. It's fourth down and six and a half. And a punting situation for Portland State. That was Adam Lopez's debut game, and that was three great plays. Pushing that right tackle back a little bit, making moves, being athletic, knocking passes down, and that's a 300-pound man right there. Lopez, a junior out of Sacramento, American River College, and a good sequence for the pack front line there. Punting situation, Neisner for Portland State. Standing at his four-yard line, good snap, rolls to his right, booms it away from the six, better punt this time. Knuckling for Mannix, backpedaling at the 38. Up the near sideline, now it's Fossum, excuse me, at the 40, riding out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Tackle made by Romeo Gunt for Portland State. So Fossum with the punt return across the 40-yard line, and now the pack with once again Good field position, but a timeout on the field. First and 10, Nevada at their own 43, 9 9 tie, 13 23, second quarter. Back to Mackey in a moment. It's Wolfpack football from Learfield. It's more than just a game, it's family, it's love, it's a way of life. It's more than just a game, it's family, it's love, it's a way of life. It's when generations come together and celebrate as one. It's the moments you talk about, the stories you tell your kids and their kids. It's more than just a game. It's you, it's us. It's Nevada Wolfpack football. Tickets are on sale now. Visit NevadaWolfpack.com. tie second quarter 13 23 remaining Nevada football at their own 42 yard line pack fans now is a great time to test drive a new Toyota visit your northern Nevada Toyota dealers today Toyota let's go places Nevada's offense has not done much they haven't scored a touchdown it was Daniel Brown with the 42 yard interception return for the lone Wolfpack touchdown Ganji is two of seven passing Bossom and Armstrong each have one reception apiece Rushing game has not been huge either. Alex Margulies, how's that sideline down there? Sideline is looking a lot more energized after that big play. And I want to talk about the interception from Brown. There was some pressure for us, and part of it came from defensive end Sam Hammond seeing some of his first action as a sophomore. The walk-on from Yarrington was just awarded a scholarship a couple weeks ago by Jay Norvell. Great story about that. Norvell had talked about, well, now that you're on scholarship, Sam, you can eat as much as you want at that training table. His mom, <laughs> Patricia, had talked about that when he was in daycare as a kid. The state actually had to go and ask if they could feed him two times lunches. 
Oh, Hammond's a big guy. Here's Ganji throwing long on first down. He's got his man, Mannix, and there he goes for a touchdown. 58 yards, and the Pack are in front. That was the same play they had for the first series, the first actual play, where Mannix went out to the right-hand side all the way down. Okay, long bomb pass, same exact one. This one, now their timing was a lot better. On the run, did not even skip a step. Unfortunately, there's a, I saw a yellow, uh, yeah, there's a handkerchief in the, uh, in the end zone. Probably still a celebration. So there's a marker down, but it's after the play. Mannix, last year a freshman All-American. Had a touchdown catch in the opener. Let's see if his catch here will stand. There are two unsportsmanlike fouls on the offense. Number one and number 62. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The result of the play is a touchdown. 58 yard scoring strike. Ganji to Mannix. Sing along, you know the words. It's 15 to 9 Nevada at the 13 16 mark here in the second quarter. Now Ahmed trying to convert on his second PAT attempt. He missed his first. Good snap this time, spotted and kicked. And that one is good. 16-9, the pack with 16 unanswered. And they go in front of Portland State at the 13-16 mark here in the second quarter. Timeout on the field, back to Mackey in a moment. It's Wolfpack football from Learfield. It's more than just a game. It's family, it's love, it's a way of life. It's when generations come together and celebrate as one. It's the moments you talk about, the stories you tell your kids and their kids. It's more than just a game. It's you. It's us. It's Nevada Wolfpack football. Tickets are on sale now. Visit NevadaWolfpack.com. Pack Coaches Show presented by Dolan Lexus every Wednesday from 6 to 7 on ESPN Radio 94.5 FM. We visit with Coach Jay Norvell, other great guests each week. Dolan Lexus Drive Summary, one play, 58 yards, seven electrifying seconds. Angie to Mannix for 58 yards. 16-9, Nevada, 13-16, second quarter. Mike Edwards, that's the quick strike offense. Pack fans came to know and love last year. For sure. We got plays at, uh, real quick, small ones, small ones, and then hit those big ones and when those uh, when it becomes possible. So uh, nothing like a little Mannix deep ball to uh, solidify a big lead. What about the Vikings? They were up 9 nothing in this game. There's been a defensive adjustment. The Packers kind of unrepentantly blitzing now. And Alexander and the offensive line for the Vikings have a tough assignment. What's the adjustment they now have to make? So they'll probably what happens in the first series they had, they had a lot of those linemen cut. They'll cut inside or cut outside, a gap cut uh, to knock down that rush. Uh, more than likely, they'll probably do a slide protection where they'll have gaps uh, either at the left or right of them, stay together, make sure those twists and those blitz are picked up. Penalties on the touchdown celebration, so the pack will kick off from their own 10-yard line, and this means Hawthorne and Trakel set up shop at their own 25. So this, barring something rather unorthodox, will give Portland State some outstanding field position. 16 unanswered for Nevada to roar back after a 9-0 lead for Portland State to start the ball game. Trakel back at the 20, takes it up the near hash. Up to the 35-40, has a crease and tumbles forward to the 43-yard line. 
He's hip checked to the earth and meeting him at the earth was Lucas Weber there. There was contact before, but Weber was the one who made sure he went down. First and 10 for Portland State at the 44. Part of any team's quest to reclaim some momentum, as the Vikings now must do, is field position. So those penalties, you might think, oh, well, it's just a, it's a touchdown celebration, but kicking off from your 10-yard line, you're not helping your defense whatsoever. Not at all, especially when the ball ends up at the uh, 44. Uh, that's a good, good return if it was a regular kickoff. So it puts them in a good spot. Uh, you'll probably see a lot more uh, of that blitz coming from the Wolfpack defense. Green is the running back. Motion behind him in the pistol alignment. Handoff Green going left side. Weber's got him at the line of scrimmage. Green falls forward to the 45, gain of one. Gabriel Sewell, along with Weber, makes the tackle. Gain of one. Second down and nine at the 45-yard line. Line to gain is the 46 of Nevada. Portland State left to right and white. Trailing 16-9, second quarter. Turning clock, 12-47. Trips near side, slot far side. Alexander alone in the backfield. Pack show blitz again. They have one, two, three, four, five, six up front. Alexander comes to the line, talks to his offensive line. Trying to call out the protections here as the pack load up for another big rush. Snap back to Alexander. Design roll out right. Quick throw right side. Complete with the 49 of the pack. And tackle right on top of Matayo to Lolly Motu. Lolly Motu on the catch. It'll be third down and three. Line to gain the 46 of the pack. Line of scrimmage the 49. So Portland State into Nevada territory once again. Third and three. Slot left. Dagby alone to the right side. Green behind Alexander in the pistol. Kelly is in the slot inside of Talali Motu. Back to pass Alexander. Sets. Throws underneath. Bobbling Kelly. Can't make the catch at the 46-yard line. Incompletion makes it fourth and three. And Kelly just couldn't bobble that to himself. Yeah, he, he, he turned his head too quick. The, uh, the miss receiver turned the head to see where the defensive guy is to get that hit and forgot about the ball. Four down territory for Portland State. And the head coach, Bruce Barnum, they like to go forward on fourth down. They are not afraid to do so. Last year, they were 19 of 39 on fourth downs. A little bit of Barney ball, Barnum ball. Calls that uh, blue collar toughness up in Portland State. Double tight ends. Pistol alignment, snap back. Alexander pressure comes up the middle. He's got the first down to the 45 40. Slides down across the 35. Mark him down at the 34 yard line of the pack. That's a 15 yard gain. And good for a first down, converting on fourth down. First and 10 for Portland State at the Nevada 34. That double tight uh, allows those uh, tight ends to really push those outside ends a uh, wider rush. And sure enough, that happened, and quarterback up the middle. Yeah, a broader wall of protection for Alexander, who then very adroitly exploited the gap in the middle of the defense for the first down. First and 10 to the 34, swinging out left side. Kelly's got it at the 30, spins through a tackle. Bash, out of bounds on the far sideline of the 28. Asani Rufus makes his presence felt in this ball game. And there goes that pass protection. It's a quick slant or a quick uh, lateral ball out to the sideline. Uh, all the offensive linemen have to do is cut those guys on the knees, get their hands down, and uh, avoid that penetration. Seven yard reception there. Second down and three at the 27 for Portland State. Trips to the field side, the wide side. Alexander looks to the sideline now. Slot to the far side. Tomopea is wide left. Green is in the slot. Tomopea is a tight end, but he's wide here. Big blitz from the pack again. Alexander throws under pressure over the middle. Incomplete wanted Kelly crossing at the 20. And a big hit on Alexander coming from Hammond. Alexander's helmet is off, and he's a little groggy getting up at the 38-yard line. That's Hungry Hammond on the, on the attack. That's a lot of beef coming at you at 256 pounds, 255, 60 pounds, but full speed rush. Incompletion stops the clock at 10.30. Here in the second quarter, 16-9 Nevada. Third and three for Portland State at the 27 of the Wolfpack. Dagby and Talali Motu slotted right. Now Eason is in at quarterback for the first time. Eason is on at quarterback. Green is behind him, and a timeout is coming. 
the previous way is on the review. Nope, they're going to review it. So for the first time, Jelani Eason, who is the starter in the season opener a year ago, comes in at quarterback. Now, let's talk about what they could be reviewing. Well, you, you would think they would probably review the maybe a helmet's a helmet because of the blind side of the back. 10-27 remaining, second quarter, Nevada 16, Portland State 9. An incompletion that involved a hit on the quarterback by Hammond. Left Alexander Groggy. And Eason has come on replacing Alexander. And now the play is under review. And these reviews can take 30 seconds and they can take about 10 to 15 minutes. Well, I wonder, pull, pull I wonder up if a chair. Game, yeah, I wonder if there's a game clock on those. <laughs> You, gotta get, you have to get the ball back to do the kickoff, 40 seconds. We should probably put a game clock on the on the review, right? Remember last year we spent like 12 minutes <laughs> waiting for a phone, waiting for a call. You're not bitter about it. No, not at all. Dedicated to complete family wellness care, Family First Chiropractic is Northern Nevada's leading practice with two convenient offices in Sparks and South Reno. So a play under review. There was no foul on the play. No flag, yeah. But that doesn't matter. You, There is this, well, quite frankly, this Orwellian uh, situation where you can review a play to see if there's a penalty. And we're speculating that that's what's going on at the 10-27 mark here in the second quarter. Hey, I want to shout out Pac Volleyball. They're playing at the Northern Illinois Invitational right now in DeKalb, Illinois. They have a doubleheader today. They won their first match. They beat Virginia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shout out volleyball. How, how many people or how many player uh, teams are in that tournament? I think three. I think it's uh, Northern Illinois, Northern Kentucky, and Virginia, in addition to the pack. So that would be a total of four, Mike. By three, I meant four. <laughs> It's that new math. Also, <laughs> cross country gets their season underway 10 o'clock tomorrow in San Francisco. Oh. You can follow action along at NevadaWolfpack.com. Not a pl bad place to run? You know I'm all about the Olympic sports, Mike. Yes you, yes, you are. I really do. What's your favorite Olympic sport? All of them. Well. Whatever one I'm working. Okay. So an extensive review here. And again, there was a hit on the quarterback, Alexander. There was no flag on the play. There was an incompletion. Alexander was evidently injured uh, sufficient. Well, his helmet did come off. I don't know if it was a contact that right. came off or the, or the ground. Maybe that's part of it. Well, Eason checked in at quarterback, and Alexander was being tended to by the athletic training staff for Portland State. We have not seen a replay of the hit here in our booth, so we cannot provide or, you with any additional insight. Or of anything. We haven't seen a replay of anything. No. Well, the referee is Dwayne Johnson, and he has the headset on at the 18-yard line on the near side, so there is a lengthy review right now. Dwayne the Rock? Well, I mean, now's a great time, Mike, if there's anything we didn't get to in the pregame. The Let's floor is yours. How about a check of the Shields out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by Shields, where your retail adventure begins. Shields at the outlets at Legends. Utah State leading Michigan State. 5.05 to go fourth quarter. Utah State 31, the Spartans 30. Now we see a replay. Yeah. Helmet to helmet. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe that was a shoulder. I don't know. You can't tell that angle. Not conclusive. I mean, these are not the replays that are being shown to make the call here. This is just a scoreboard replay yeah. we're seeing in the booth here. Continuing on the Shields out of town scoreboard. San Diego State 7, number 13, Stanford 2. 7.27 to go second quarter. So right now, Utah State has a one-point lead in Michigan State in the fourth quarter. 
And San Diego State has a five-point lead at Stanford in the second quarter. That's interesting. Now the officials are going to huddle up, and we'll go down to Dwayne Johnson. Not just Still yet. Still conversing. Not just yet. <laughs> we could talk about the Hammond, Hungry, hungry Hammond, and how uh, the Eat, Eat to Win program has gained, uh, gained some pounds on the defensive line. And the fact that defensive line gained about 30 pounds on average from last year to this year. And from what we saw at the beginning of this year, or beginning of this, um, the game to this uh, second quarter, a lot of movement. So uh, those big guys getting a little rest, three or four plays, coming yeah. in, coming in, causing havoc, uh, and obviously causing a non-flag penalty potentially coming soon. Yeah, we thought we were going to hear from the referee, Dwayne Johnson, but now there's more conversation. I've not been running a clock on this delay. We've got to be over five minutes, right? Yeah, I would say about that. Yeah. Four and a half. Huh? Feels like four and a half. <laughs> I know that because our passing period at school is exactly five. Right. So I don't feel that time clock kicking in at five minutes quite yet. But it's reaching. You see a lot of guys hopping around trying to keep loose loose yeah. because it, it is kind of uh, daunting when you're sitting there waiting for who knows what's going to happen hey does anybody have 30 exercise bikes real quick yeah exactly <laughs> line them up yeah so the hit on alexander and and we initially reported it was hammond but in the replay we couldn't really see what was going on now the officials are going to talk to the pack well one official's coming over all right here's Referee Dwayne Johnson. After, re after reviewing the play, there was a targeting foul on number 99 of the defense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Number 95, 99 is disqualified from the game. That's Corey Rush, senior from Salt Lake City, and the heart and soul of the defensive line. I would 100% agree with that. So Corey Rush is sent off at the 10:27 mark here in the second quarter. Well, Corey Rush is the type of guy who uh, he he literally leads by example and voice and the way he handles things. Just looking at the review. He rushed it. He got him with his helmet. I mean, that's a pretty clear targeting call as we see the replay. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm somewhat curious what took so long. I guess if you're going to disqualify a guy, you want to make sure you're right. Um, but Corey Rush is on the field right now. Yeah, he's pleading his case. Yeah. But Rush is coming off. And here goes Lopez in for Rush. And, so, and, and unfortunately, I think it was Hammond because Hammond was in that play. And and maybe there's numbers, but Hammond's a 98, and Corey Rush is 99. And with us big guys, those jerseys, they kind of fold up a little bit. Well, Rush is sent off. It's first and 10, Portland State of the 14-yard line. It's 16-9 Nevada. 10-27, second quarter. Portland State has been aided throughout this drive by pack penalties, starting with the celebration on the touchdown. Eason fakes a handoff, fakes a pitch, rolls left side, comes around the end of the 10-yard line, and his gang tackled there, gain of four, as Jelani Eason takes his first snap of the season, the sophomore out of Los Angeles, Junipero Cerro High School. In six games last year, Eason, 69 completions, just about 49% for 803 yards, eight touchdowns. Well, Nephi Sewell on that last play was out, uh, athletically outstanding. He actually bought on the fake and spun outside and still had a chance to get his hand around the ball carrier. If not, I think that may, would have been a six points. Second and six of the ten, line to gain the four of the pack. Portland State down a touchdown in the Nevada State Bank blue zone. Snap to Eason, hands off green, starts left, cuts back up the hash, moves the pile forward to the six-yard line. 
So tough running up the hash for Green. He's across the seven, shy of the six. That brings up third down and two and a half. And they're moving it in between the tackles here. Yeah, they're they, running right at where Corey Rush isn't. Yes, and I was going to say that they're, maybe they're taking advantage of uh, the uh, upsetness that the D-line has and maybe the, the heaviness on that right-hand side of the D-line where Corey, Corey Rush was. Double tight ends to the right side. Third down, under three, handoff. Martin slips a tackle to the five, corkscrewing at the three. He's got a first down for the Vikings. He's across the four yard line. This should be a first and goal just outside the three for Portland State. Clock moving. Now stopping momentarily at 849 to move the chains unless they're not moving the chains. Oh no, wow, he's short of the first down. So the clock should have been moving this whole time. Fourth down and inches just outside the four, and now a stoppage from the officials. Well, again, Nephi Sewell came flat down the line of scrimmage All and right. slowed down a little bit, but here goes the clock. Fourth and inches at the four-yard line. They need inside the four for first and goal, does Portland State. Pack defending a 16-9 lead in the second quarter. Eason has the pistol snap. Fakes a handoff, goes forward, he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Down he goes, but there's a flag. He crossed the five, he was knocked off his feet, but there's a marker down. No marker. I thought I saw a flag come down. Instead, the pack hold on downs. An unbelievable stop right there. A little fake, fake kind of a draw with the, with the quarterback. And that was Dom Peterson. I think I'm, I saw a yellow hanky on the field, but I think it was picked up. Right at the moment of the tackle, Peterson makes the hit. So the pack force a turnover on downs. And Portland State gives it back to Nevada at their own five yard line. So a real field position game here in the second quarter. There you go. 8.30 to go, pack with the ball, 16-9 lead, snap to Ganji. Hand off to Otawa, right side. First carry for the brother of a legend. And he rumbles outside to the eight-yard line. So a There's your flag right there. I don't know. And we got a marker down. To a tower. Vitawa's younger brother. There are a lot of there are a lot of spark plugs in the backfield Out for. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number eight. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's number eight. That's Houston Barnes if it's number nine. And after he tackled Tawa, he kind of pushed off and gave a little extra shove at the end. Nope. So on Maxwell Howell, okay. Correction, number nine. Oh gosh. They messed the eight and nine huh. up before with yeah. uh, Hammond, Hammond, Hammond and Reed. Rush. A rush, rather, yeah. All right, everybody with their season opener tonight, including the officials. Play action fake. Ganji throws off his back foot right side. It's up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Intercepted to the 46-yard line. Maxwell Howell, the only man there, and it's taken away by Portland State. And Ganji was throwing to a spot where there was no one. Yeah, there was a there was a uh, receiver about five yards short of that, and a receiver about five yards beyond that. It was kind of right in the middle. Ganji kind of threw off his back foot instead of leading with his left shoulder. Fits and starts in the season opener. 8:06, second quarter. Pack 16, Portland State nine. That was the Nevada first touchdown. Apart from that, fairly mistake-free football for Davis Alexander, quarterbacking the Vikings. Very confident in the pocket, very uh, as a good demeanor as an offense as a whole. Hands off, sweep on the left side, and a good play on a jet sweep to the 35-yard line. First down and more up to the 40-yard line. As that goes to Antoine Williams, first time we've seen Antoine, the sophomore out of Los Angeles and Dorsey High School. He scampers to the 40-yard line, 15-yard gain, first and 10. A little jet sweep going to the yeah, far side. I'm just going to say a little halftime adjustment. 
Uh, haven't seen any type of that outside uh, run play at all by Portland. It's always been passing or down the middle. First and 10 of the 40, jet sweep coming to the near side. This is Williams, strung out, lateral pursuit from Gabriel Sewell, and he rushes him out of bounds right at the 39-yard line. Loss of one, maybe no gain, right at the 40, second and 10. So they run the same play to the other side with the same ball carrier. Yeah. And the pack a little bit more ready for it this time. Well, obviously, the first time you see it the whole entire game is you're going to get some plays out or get some yards off of it. But then once you see it, you can adjust. Second and 10, and a swing pass is bobbled by Green, and he pounces on it at the 34. It's an incomplete pass, not a lateral. If that were a lateral, that'd be a loss of six, but instead it's third and 10 to the 40-yard line. And, you know, for Bruce Barnum, he's in his fourth year now as the head coach. He was the offensive coordinator before he became the head coach. He was still the play caller as the head coach in his first season when they went 9-2 and two and beat two FBS teams. But he had not been calling the plays each of the last two years. Now he's back calling the plays himself. New wrinkle Correct. here in the yep. second half. Third and 10, pressure, and down goes Davis Alexander at the 37-yard line. Rufus and Reed in the backfield as the back brought a blitz. Yeah, slightly Rufus came from the outside. And Squeeze him up the middle and a uh, quarterback kind of a little trip. Uh, usually he's not that unathletic, but he tripped over his own feet or spun out of there and went down for the, for the sack. Punting situation for the Vikings. Ben Neisner. Standing at his 23-yard line. He'll get it away from about the 25 and a good snap. Mannix is deep to receive, moves up, signals fair catch, and takes it at the 27 on the four hash mark. So the pack have it first and 10 of their own 27 yard line, 11.45, third quarter, Nevada 37 and Portland State 19. Fans ever wonder what the most comfortable pillow feels like? Go to mypillow.com, click on the four pack special, enter promo code WOLFPACK to find out. You'll get two premium pillows and two go anywhere pillows for 50% off when you use the promo code Wolfpack. First and 10 at the 27 for Nevada, right to left in blue. Hand off Kincaid, jet sweep right side, darts through a hole to 40, boost to the 50, off to the races right sideline. Kincaid 20, 10, touchdown Nevada. 73 yards. <laughs> So Portland State had their little wrinkle off the jet sweep going left and right. Uh, the Wolfpack had their little wrinkle, uh, a little different play, a little different play action, uh, going out to the right-hand side off, off tackle. Amazing speed by Kincaid. Awesome play. Nevada scoring on the first play of the possession. 73 yards. Dolan Lexus drive summary, one play, 73 yards, 11 seconds. Ramiz Ahmed on for the point after. And the snap is spotted, the kick is up, and it is good. 11.34 to go, third quarter. Nevada 44, Portland State 19. Timeout on the field, back to Mackey in a moment. Wolfpack football from Learfield.
Today's broadcast brought to you by Cold Wolf Banker Select, official real estate partner of the Nevada Wolf Pack. Jackson Kincaid with a 73-yard touchdown run. 44-19 pack, 11.34 to go third quarter. Alex Margulies, take it away. Guys, you know, we were talking the story earlier about Devontae Lee and how he was kind of lightly recruited coming out of high school. Nevada was able to nab him. Well, Jackson Kincaid, he went to a powerhouse high school, St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Unfortunately for him, he was kind of buried on the depth chart. A lot of guys that went to Power 5 schools ahead of him. Well, an injury occurred halfway through his senior year, and he would go off. That would catch the attention of Nevada. Then under head coach Brian Polian, they were able to nab him. This is a guy they've always been really excited about. And if you think the guys like Lee and Tawa and Moore, those are kind of your thunder. Can cage your lightning? Lightning in a bottle there on a jet sweep for 73 yards on the first play of the possession. The lightning and the thunder. Lightning and the thunder. I like that. Speed and power. Saw in the, the backfield. lightning. Waited on the thunder. Yes. <laughs> it, it, that's tough to defend. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting there and game planning the whole entire week for speed and thunder, you got to do double the work as a defense. Bishop and Hawthorne deep to receive. The Ramiz Ahmed kick is seven yards deep in the end zone, and Bishop Mitchell takes an E. Touchback for Portland State at 11.34, third quarter. First and 10 at the 25 for the Vikings. Looking up at a 44-19 Nevada lead. The annual Wolfpack Hall of Fame dinner is coming up on September 14th at the downtown Reno Ballroom. This unique event open to the public. Tickets just $60. Join us as we welcome the class of 2018 into the Nevada Athletics Hall of Fame, including legendary baseball coach Gary Powers, basketball star Marcellus Kemp, football legend Mike Edwards. Who is that guy? And others in this great class. Call 775-682-6902, 682-6902 for more information. Mike Edwards, Hall of Famer. First and ten, snap back to Alexander, rolls right for Portland State, throws back over the middle and dropped by Cutter in a slide at the 35-yard line. Incomplete pass, stops the clock, 11.28 to go. Third quarter, second down and ten for the Vikings. The closing speed on Gabriel Sewell is amazing at middle backer. He was all of a sudden seven yards away from the quarterback, and in a split second he was in the face, not allowing that quarterback to throw accurately as he did in the first half. And that's that, that's confidence build from the first half for Gabriel Sewell. Awesome play. McCorley and Mitchell slot right. Hand off. Instead straight ahead going nowhere as Alexander hands it to Hoffman, who's buried, trying to go straight up the middle. And a loss of a yard back to the 24-yard line brings up third down and 11. Like McDade. Leading the charge there, big Jarius McDade, a senior who had his season last year cut short due to injury. And he's part of that big defensive line. Big at 335 is a, kind of an understatement. Third and 11, line to gain the 35, line of scrimmage to the 24. Alexander has the snap, rolls to his right laterally at the 15, steps up to the 20, pumps, hit, and pulled down on the near sideline. Gabriel Sewell blew him up, but Sewell hurt himself. Sewell hurt his hand as he goes into a crouch on the near sideline. Alexander is down with a loss of one on the play. It's fourth down and 12, but let's see the situation with Sewell, who immediately went to a knee and appeared to hurt his hand on the tackle. Oh, I just talked about his closing speed, but that's just we a different there. level. That yeah. was unbelievable. All of a sudden, he's right in the quarterback's face. had nothing to do. Neisner on to punt once again for Portland State. Mannix waiting at the 40-yard line of Nevada. Neisner under pressure. End over end punt gets it away. Fair catch Mannix. Little bit of a snow cone, but makes the catch at the 38-yard line on the far hash. So first and 10 pack. I say far hash, it's between the hashes. First and 10 Nevada at their own 38, 10-03, third quarter. 44-19. Nevada in front. Portland State led this game 9 to nothing, But the Pack scored 23 unanswered to seize the lead in the second quarter. It was tied at 9 at the end of the first. Now Nevada with a larger lead. Here's a handoff to Tawa as the Wildcat quarterback. He dashes to the weak side left. He's to the 45 and ridden down to the 47-yard line. Good reaction defensively by Portland State. 
As the pack threw a different look at them, but Houston Barnes stayed the ball carrier. And now Barnes is down, and he looks to be cramped up maybe at the 46 yard line. Meanwhile, a nine yard carry for Tawa on that Wildcat QB keeper. Second and one at the 47 yard line, line to gain the 48. That's the same look they had uh, when, uh, excuse me, our last uh, touchdown with the little Wildcat. Fans for over 20 years, Wells Fargo has been part of the Nevada Wolfpack community. They share your passion for the game. Thank you for letting Wells Fargo be part of the team. Also, Shelter Insurance, sponsor of tonight's broadcast. Ask an agent about how Shelter's auto policy includes roadside assistance. Learn more at shelterinsurance.com. And I tell you what, Pack fans, this is my favorite show on television. Keep up on all Nevada athletics with News 4's Wolfpack All Access, presented by champion Chevrolet. Wolfpack All Access airs every Sunday night after NFL Sunday Night Football on News 4. And we will see it multiple times throughout the week on the new Nevada Sports Net. All right, the injury situation resolved as Barnes walks off to the far sideline. Second down and one for the pack at the 47 yard line. Approaching midfield, going right to left in the third quarter. Ganji claps his hands, takes a snap, hands off to Lee, starts up the middle, cuts left, goes back to the middle, and bowls his way to the 49 yard line with a first down. First and 10, Nevada at their own 49 yard line. Leading 44 to 19, this is the time where the team with the lead must establish the ability to grind it out on the ground. You control the ball, you control the line of scrimmage, you control the clock, and you really drain the life out of the opponent. For sure, especially with four, four running backs, you can do that. You kind of see what they have to offer. Toss right side, Tawa, he's gonna throw. Tawa throwing for Cooks at the 15. He's got it down to the 11. Marker down to the 49. So while we sort out the penalty, let's go down to Alex Margulies. Guys, a little shuffling on the Nevada offensive line. Anthony Palomares has come out of the game and checking and in for him a sophomore, Nathan offense. Edwards. He is from Galena High School from right here in Reno. He's a walk-on, six foot three, 290 pounds. He is seeing his first collegiate action. Nice. Another Edwards on the field. His father played here, Tony Edwards, many moons ago. And he's, uh, he used to be coached down at Galena as well. Uh, probably up and hanging out at the uh, Alumni Center right now. Meanwhile, the infraction against the pack moves the ball back to the 44-yard line, the Nevada 44. Wipes out a Tawa pass to Cooks. Ineligible man downfield, I believe, was the it, call. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, but it looks like that's what, it was, what the call was. Trips to the near side. Now Ganji sets up with Lee on his hip left. Hand off Lee, sweeping right side. 45-50, head down across the 50, out of bounds for a sideline to the 48 of Portland State. And Dion Cram pushes him out over there, second down. Gain of four, it'll be second and six. Turning clock, 8.55, third quarter. Nevada 44, Portland State 19. Nathan Edwards' first play gets the, gets the pull and lead up, and that's, that's kind of unfair. That's my favorite thing to do. Angie at the 45, sets throws, right side, Manix down the sideline, 20, 10, touchdown! Three touchdown receptions for McLean Manix. I'm going to tell you the timing on that was absolutely perfect. We talked about, Alex talks about it at halftime with Manix. Manix and Ganji has spent time together from the last season to now. Their time on that was absolutely, he, he literally took two steps, a window open, and it hit him right in the chest. No stride needed. It was awesome. Absolutely amazing play. 50 to 19, Nevada. 8.36 to go, third quarter. Ramiz Ahmed for the point after. Good snap, spotted and kicked up, and good. 51 to 19. The Wolfpack offense alive and kicking here in the second half. Timeout on the field. 
Nevada up big over Portland State. Back to Mackey Stadium in a moment. It's Wolfpack football from Learfield. It's more than just a game. It's family. It's love. It's a way of life. It's when generations come together and celebrate as one. It's the moments you talk about, the stories you tell your kids and their kids. It's more than just a game. It's you. It's us. It's Nevada Wolfpack football. Tickets are on sale now. Visit NevadaWolfpack.com. Lex's drive summary, four plays, 62 yards, one minute, 27 seconds. Ty Ganji to McLean Mannix, 47 yards. And the touchdown for Mannix, his third touchdown catch of the game, 51-19 Nevada at 8.36 here in quarter number three. I suppose that's the point of scheduling a lower division opponent in the first game. You want to kind of see if your offense can work in choreography because playing offensive football is hard against air. Yeah, it is. Let alone against a defense. You said choreography. It's like synchronized swimming, if you will, a ballet. And I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down with that. Yeah. You really have to work on all 11 pistons that's the only way an offense can work if one goes down the whole engine blows so you can see the timing which cool thing about so far this third quarter you can see the timing develop from the first quarter to the second quarter until that last play was absolutely amazing Ganji had all the time in the world didn't need much time because Manning just opened up and boom snipered him Hawthorne at the five, calls for a fair catch, fumbles, but then recovers at the five. And let's see, because of the fumble, that fair catch will not be a touchback, which is it a bit of a be. backbreaker for Portland State. Remember the new rule, if you call for a fair catch on a kickoff, inside the 25, it's an automatic touchback. But because Hawthorne did not handle that cleanly, instead it is first and 10, call it the six yard line for Portland State. 8.36 to go, third quarter. 51-19 pack. Alexander with green behind him in the pistol alignment for the Vikings. Corley split to the left, slot to the near side. Delay counter handoff, green going left side. Hit and pulled down at the 10-yard line, gain of about three. Moving over to make the hit in pursuit there was Justin Brent, another pack player who moved from offense to defense, Justin Brent, who also played basketball this year along with Elijah Cooks. Brent, transfer from Notre Dame, he's out of Indiana, Indianapolis. Rolling to the right side, Davis pressured, throws on the move and lobs it out of bounds on the near side. And again, we saw the great closing speed of Gabriel, Gabriel Sewell. Sewell. It really, he really, he is a linebacker de, uh, status and demeanor, but he's got closing speed like a DB. It's it's pretty, it's really really impressive to watch. So the incompletion stops the clock at 7:58, third quarter. That brings up third down. Line to gain is the 16. Line of scrimmage, about the 9. It's third and 7. Slot left. And slot right for Portland State. We see Cole Ford in that slot left. Alexander at the goal line, steps up and is sacked at the 2. Malik Reed. He's done this, so he's about three or four yards deep as a linebacker. A little stall, 
a little blitz, delayed blitz, and in the first half, he would get tripped up by the by the uh, by the running back, get cut, get cartwheeled, end over end. But this time, he was aware of that and topped over for the sack. And there is an injured Viking down to the two yard line. Remember, Reed had eight sacks a season ago to lead the team. From the defensive end position, Coach Norvell asked Reed, an all-conference player, to change positions to linebacker in order to help the pack get bigger up front because Malik's about 240 at most. Put, yeah. They, they listed him at 250, I think, last year at one uh, point in time. No. 230-something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's about 235. Yeah. He's playing at 235 and listed at 235 this year. So... He moves to linebacker, but he can still rush the passer, and he picks up a sack here. Meanwhile, the injured Viking was Alexander who went down on that sack, but he's walking off under his own power at 744. I just think with Malik Reed, if, if he, and it looks like that, like that play learned from the first half, if he continues to do that, he is one of the, going to be one of these linebackers that's going to be nearly impossible to stop as he rushes a running back a lineman, an athletic lineman, a big lineman, because he ha he knows the tools up front anyway as a defensive lineman, but now he has, does it from there. He has air, that freedom. And he has this, this, this extensive amount of freedom, right, left, speed, power. Uh, you can see him, you're going to see him grow as a defensive guru. All right, a short snap with the line of scrimmage at the two. This is usually 15 yards deep, but a short snap for the punter Neisner who gets it away with a beautiful spiraling kick that sends Mannix back to the Nevada 48 and he runs laterally to the near side of the 50 trying to turn the corner does 40 left sideline 35 and he's out of bounds on the near sideline brings it from the 48 to the 39 yard line a 13 yard return out of bounds on the near sideline first and 10 Nevada at the 39 yard line of Portland State 724 third quarter Pack 51 and the Vikings 19. Fans get more from AAA insurance that's not just insurance. Stop by the branch located at 6795 South Virginia Street and get a quote. AAA is a proud supporter of the pack at home and on the road. Nevada first and 10 of the 39. Ganji is the quarterback. He's back to pass. Sets and throws, middle of the field, cut by Fossum, pulled down to the five-yard line, first and goal. Fossum on that post route in between the hashes. First down, tackle made by Jared Reed. A 35-yard game. I guarantee Caleb Fossum did not sleep one ounce yesterday or last night. Tal so eager to play this game. Towel behind Ganji, first and goal at the five. Pistol formation. Ganji fakes a handoff, throws to Henley incomplete as he lunges forward on a post. Left of center. Incompletion stops it at 651. Second and goal, call it the five. So that's a 34-yard official completion to Fossum on the play to set up this goal-to-go situation. Second and goal from the five. Nevada leading 51-19. to 19. When do they stop throwing, Mike? Uh, it's an air raid offense, so oh. I'm not sure. All right. Keeper, Ganji, left side, into the end zone with a lunge. Touchdown pass. <laughs> little RPO action there. Ganji with the option to hand it off to Tawa, takes it himself around left end, and puts the pack up 57-19. At 6.46. Well, Ganji rushed for four touchdowns last year in addition to throwing for 25. He's got one on the ground here. And the Pack build the lead to 57-19 here in the third. Ramiz Ahmed for the point after. Remember, he only handled kickoffs last year, but he's the place kicker as well. And his PAT attempt is good. 58-19 Nevada at 646 in the third quarter. Dolan Lexus drive summary, three plays, 39 yards, 38 seconds. Ganji from five yards out. 
Well, the Pack had to go overtime to beat Big Sky opponent Cal Poly to start 2016. Nevada lost at the end of regulation, trying to force extra against Idaho State. Last year, a Big Sky opponent. The Big Sky, an FCS opponent in Mackey Stadium, has not been a gimme for the Pack in not recent memory. All. And this is the breakout performance. And I think a lot of folks who follow this program and a lot of people around the community in northern Nevada can breathe a sigh of relief. And remember, San Jose State lost to Davis yesterday. Yeah. Big Sky got the Mountain West already once this weekend. You cannot, you cannot come to a game and say, oh, I'm FBS and you're FCS. Okay, one letter off doesn't mean anything. It's, we're still playing football. Right. Anybody the, can be anybody at any time. If you've got a helmet and I've got a helmet, it's football, there's right? All, there's, yeah. all, there's always an opportunity. Yeah. And we saw that from the first play. It's, you know, there's, there's trickery happening. There's things that can happen. There's injuries that can happen. There's so many things you cannot overlook a single opponent. 58-19, Nevada kicking away to Portland State. Ahmed will boom it away. Mitchell on the near side and Hawthorne on the far side in front of the northern end zone for Portland State. Mitchell astride the goal line, brings it in between the hashes to the 20, hemmed in and thrown down to the 15. Coverage there, multifaceted from the pack, but leading the charge was Jordan Lee. So first and 10, Portland State at their own 15-yard line. With 6.42 to go in the third quarter. Stand is one and support the pack all season long with the latest Nevada gear at the Nevada Wolf Shop. Get 25% off all things Nevada first Friday of the month. That'll be next Friday. And wear school colors every Friday to show your pack pride. The Nevada Wolf Shop is your official campus store powered by students for students. Where proceeds go back to funding scholarships and putting your education first. First and ten. Portland State, their own 15-yard line. Alexander, the quarterback. Remember, he was shaken up at the end of the last series, and now the whistles sound and delay a game against the Vikings. That's a, I mean, that new rule is get on the field 40 seconds from the time they spot the ball. It's, that's deemed to be a little bit of a, an issue. First and 15 to the 10-yard line now. Portland State in the white jerseys going left to right. Alexander throws his pass, tipped to the line by Lopez. And incomplete as he bats it down. Lopez waving to the students and the band in the northern end zone. Lopez got a paw up there. He's a junior from American River College in Sacramento High School. He's, he's had an impact on this game. Oh, yeah, big time. And I think he's, a, he's the one that feeds off of adrenaline and he, I saw him warming up or at least walking back to the uh, the locker today, locker room, and he was zoned in, talking to his friends. It's, it's, that's what I'd like to see. Alexander back to pass, throws up the seam, and it's caught by Kelly, sliding down to the 31-yard line. That's good for a first down, and now they say no catch. But things like that with Lopez, I mean, he like earned the right to do that as a Wolfpack player. It sounds weird, but like he's been through the fall camp and the, and the summertime, and he, he feels one and comfortable. Well, heck, man, let's rock and roll. You know, that's that's kind of thing that I think Jay Norvell is 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 trying to grow around here is that tradition and and that enthusiasm and, and honor to be a Wolfpack player. So Kelly couldn't come up with it on the slide. Instead, incompletion means it's third down and 15 from the 10. Alexander is back, has time, stands the field, now moves up in the pocket, throws to Tomopea, who's cut down right of the 17-yard line. Completion to Tomopea, but he's knocked off his feet right away, well short of the first down. Tackle made by Isaiah Hamilton, coming over from the offense to play defensive back this year. Fourth down and a punting situation, fourth and eight for Portland State. Remember, Hamilton was a running back in 2017. So many changes. Clock moves under six minutes in this third quarter. Nevada in charge, 58 to 19 over Portland State. Eisner 
Gets this punt away from his five, end over end, angling to the far side. Fair catch called for and taken at the 45-yard line of Nevada by McLean Mannix. First and 10 pack at their own 45-yard line. Join the Greater Nevada Credit Union's fundraising drive to keep the Wolfpack band jamming. Come see us at any Greater Nevada branch for more information. The band has been good tonight. Boy, I got hyped. Yes. I got extra hyped during the Bud Light tailgate when we started to hear the band. I can see I can see oh, you yeah. in, in your music background, yeah. in your music career, a little head bob. And you oh, stopped, I, I think you stopped mid-sentence, by I the way. I was grooving. I, it, it got me going. There's nothing like a good band with oh. a good pop. First and 10 pack, Ganji hands off Tawa, tries the right side and is met by a sea of white shirts, half a yard short of the line of scrimmage. So a loss of half a yard for Tawa. Second down and 10 and a half in between the 44 and 45 yard line. And credit the tackle really to the front seven of Portland State. They got off the ball well. And the initial hit coming in from Noah Yunker out of Bend, Oregon. Second and 10 and a half. Snap back to Ganji, slings it out near side. Armstrong wrestled down to the 41 yard line. Loss on the play. Generous. Spot has it a loss of half a yard at the 44 yard line that brings up third down and 11 Armstrong moved over from wide receiver to tight end. He's got that big frame I just think that all all these movements I mean last year was kind of a, a learning year and this year Again, I mentioned it earlier is is the chess pieces that Norvell is doing Ganji screen pass tipped and nearly intercepted they wanted Armstrong on a tight end screen pass misdirection, but it was tipped at the line. Incompletion at 436. Brings up fourth and 11, and here comes Quentin Conaway to punt. But going back to that, like Norvell is, is taking all of those athletic uh, athletes and their athleticism and putting them where they need to go for the offense and defense. And uh, I can't even count how many defensive changes to offense and offense, defense, and different positions. Uh, but it's, it's really cool to watch and un, 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 unveil. Kelly deep to receive. Conaway first punt of the night for the pack. And a wobbling spiral. Kelly in a crowd. Fumbles. Ball is loose at the 25. He was signaling for a fair catch. But Kelly couldn't handle it clean. Pack think they have it. No signal yet. Justin Brent at the bottom of the pile. It's a Portland State Bowl. Pack thought they had it, but it is a Viking football at the 25-yard line following the punt. 4.26 to go, third quarter, 58-19 Pack. And again, Mike Edwards, the question just becomes, for either offense, really, when do you start running out the second string guys there because this game's fairly decided. You don't want to risk injury. True, and with only uh, a little more than a quarter left, you got to get some guys in because you have a long season ahead of you. you got to see what they can do in the, yep. under fire. And I know there's been a lot of substitutions on the Wolfpack side while the guy's been playing. Green behind Alexander, first and 10 of the 25. Alexander fakes twice. Slides to the right outside of the pocket. Now the 21 throws on the move upfield, and it's complete to Kelly. Spun around on the near sideline. He's got a first down. Mark him to the 46-yard line. So a gain of 21 yards, first and 10 for the Vikings. Hamilton with a tackle. First and 10, Portland State left to right on the white. At the 46-yard line, Green behind... Alexander, handoff to Green. He spins out of a tackle. He cuts to the left side, moving laterally. Breaks another tackle at the 50, and then Hall pulls him down at the 48 of Nevada. Gain of six on the play. Six tough yards for Green. Second and four. And timeout on the field for an injury, which you hate to see, and it's one of the pack defenders. We'll see We're blocked from this angle, trying to see who the injured pack player is. 
It is Anthony Hankins. Hankins being tended to at the 46-yard line. Stoppage at 347, third quarter, 58-19 pack. Hankins being helped off the field. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Wolfpack football from Learfield. Territory here for Portland State. Why not? 58 19 pack with 3.30 to go in the third. Charlie Talmopea, who has two big touchdown receptions in this game, is kind of faded away from prominence as far as who's being targeted in this offense for Portland State here in the second half. Alexander, quick throw left side, dropped in and out of the hands of Sergio Hoffman, who was running an out route about two yards short of the first down marker on the left sideline of the 46. Well, so just, turnover on downs, and the pack have it back at 326 in the third. Well, just as you say that, their tight end got bumped a little bit by Gabriel Sue as it came off the ball. So Obviously focusing on, uh, on the big heavy hitter and uh, making him not be able to go in his routes or rerouting them. And I think that makes a huge difference, an absolutely huge difference in this, in this Portland offense. First and 10 pack at the 48 yard line and Wildcat quarterback. It's Toa Tawa alone to the backfield. Slot right. Now Kincaid in motion. They fake the jet sweep and Tawa takes it himself across the 50. Crashes across to the 49 on the right side. Let's go down to Alex Margulies. Guys, you mentioned Anthony Hankins going down. He was taken off the field. They were looking at his right knee. Right now, he's on the exercise bike, so he's not ruled out in terms of coming back into the game. But certainly a guy, it's been another interesting story. We talked about Sam Hammond earlier in the game. Another guy, Anthony Hankins, a local from North Valley's high school. He was also elevated as from a walk-on to a scholarship player just a few weeks before the season started. Trips left, second down, and seven yards to go for the pack. Just bowling across the 30, up the hash, down inside the 25 to the 23. Another Wolfpack first down. Toa Tawa out there with a bunch of newcomers for the pack. Cole Turner, wide receiver, Zamudia zone incomplete. Stops the clock at 123 here in the third. It'll be second down and 10 from the 23 yard line as the pack get into that Nevada State Bank blue zone once again. Second and ten. So Dubs making his debut. Turner making his.